Right, all you glorious gamers out there, welcome to the Players 2 Podcast, the video game podcast for gamers like you, by gamers like you. You can find Players 2 on all the social media, that's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the lot. You can also find our written content over at players2.com, that's P-L-A-Y-E-R-S-T-O-O.com. And if you could take five seconds to give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts, it does a huge amount for the exposure of the show and it really, 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 really helps us out. I cannot overemphasize how much it helps us out. And while you're over there, you might as well give us a little review as well. Not a huge diatribe, tribe, just a wee thumbs up emoji is good enough for us. All right, and on with the show. With me, as always, is Mr. Lewis Camley. How's it going, Lewis? It's going pretty well, Mark, yeah. Um, I've finally been playing video games again, which Hurrah! is fantastic. Hurrah! So, uh, Hurrah! I'm in a better place than I was last week, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I am all right, man. So, what have you been playing? What have you been playing? Uh, I, know, I know you've been playing. I'm very excited <laughs> to talk about this. Yeah, well, as mentioned last week, I uh, have been playing Control since, yeah! since we last spoke. I'm, I've intentionally not asked you very much yeah. about this game because I wanted to have this discussion on the podcast tell me everything. <laughs> tell you everything no spoilers but tell me well, yeah everything. so i should say i'm playing i'm a, i'm probably i think roughly about a third of the way through the game that's based on kind of what i've seen on like how long to be and my rough kind of interpretation of what's happening and um, i've been reluctant to look up guides or anything too much so i think roughly about a third of the way through the game uh things are starting to kind of open up and pick up in different ways now so that's that's good and i should say because it is important that i'm playing on an original ps4 not a ps4 pro and i'll just i'll start there there are fairly significant frame rate and performance issues with this game i have heard this from yeah. almost universally yeah on console. i actually hadn't heard it at all i wasn't paying attention to the kind of r- right before the game's launch because of camley was very busy over the last yeah. month and has <laughs> not kept up with the gaming news as you usually would <laughs> just Is that fair to say just being locked away from it locked um, away there you no go. but i also just i knew i wanted to play it and i didn't want to get too bogged down in any of the kind of pre-release stuff that you always get when these games drop but um frame rate and graphics quality and that kind of stuff isn't something that normally bothers me too much um, and it doesn't bother me in this game I should say like it has not affected my enjoyment so far of the game but it is there and it is significant and if it does bother you you might want to wait until there's a patch presuming that they can or will patch it I mean it's been out for a while now you would have thought that that something Any faster would have happened yeah. that is going to happen kind of would have happened I've heard that there's a problem specifically when you go from the pause menu back into the game mm-hmm. there's a noticeable drop mm-hmm. and a drop for like a few minutes there can be thi- not, not a few minutes yeah like 10 seconds or something like that do you know what i mean there can be things like when you press the um the touchpad to open up your like your menus your collectibles menu okay and um, when prompted to do so when you pick something up it can just completely stick and you can't do anything except come back out of it and then go back into it the, the most significant issue i had in terms of actual frame rate loss was in a kind of an arena battle where just loads of the hiss where the enemy flooded into the room and suddenly like it was juddery as all hell really um yeah like again not prob not super problematic to play which i'll come on to but you know you're completely aware that it's happening. Okay. I've also had things where I'm watching some of what are really incredible and really interesting like FMV sequences where suddenly it just pops out of the video it's showing. This is very Remedy game. Yeah, obviously. and it's like it, it comes out of the video that you're watching and I just see my character standing in the hallway or whatever where I paused the game. But I can't, I'm not in control of her at this point. It's just like she's just there. It's just lost the video you're still getting the audio it's quite hard to explain like this but it's just like something is lost in the visual and you're just sat i'm sat there watching my character stand completely stock still in a corridor because it's still in pause mode so there's things like that that you're just like ah this some of this stuff is just shouldn't be happening but i want i just wanted to get all of that out of the way okay right because okay i will say that's quite notable yeah some negative stuff there technical issues yeah right okay removing that now removing that and as i say it's not a a huge deal to me the world the the story world of this game is completely incredible Uh, it's so far up my street i can barely believe it um the it's a very twin peaks list it's not it's not like it's not twin peaks in that it's you know it's all set in this one place yeah yeah, yeah. but what it's in the what in the bureau of control uh, yeah exactly and uh, this is it's all set within what they call the oldest house which is the kind of essentially the office block that they are based in but it is not a conventional building and it does a lot of shape-shifting and all sorts of stuff i don't think that's a spoiler that's kind of the core of the whole game so um, have you seen literally any yeah exactly exactly. um and so 
all of that stuff there's um, i would rather say like lynchian elements than twin peaks elements because it just does a lot of stuff where it plays with perspective and it plays with just kind of dream logic and that kind of thing so right at the beginning of the game uh, again not a spoiler you as you enter the building you see a portrait of the director who's not you at this point and you see two other portraits one of a janitor with his back to you and one of like the head of science or something like that and you do a little bit of stuff and you meet the janitor and he says oh you need to go and get the elevator to the next place and when you go back out where the portrait of the janitor had previously been is now an elevator but it takes you like a little minute to just be like wait a minute this is the same bit i was in before because i went into that room and got the collectible yeah that is quite lunch yeah and so there's just things like that where it's just like changing things on you and you're you know and you're kind of trying to work out what's happening so there's that part of it then also the lore that it is building again this might just be me i find it so fascinating i've read every document i've picked up i've watched every video that we've found of like listened to all the audio loops there's this whole thing where the previous director like speaks to you over a phone line i've sat and watched all of them even though you don't have to it's just stuff in the menus because the the world and the narrative it's creating i am utterly fascinated by it's not really like a game world that we've seen much of before i don't think and some of the ways that it tells its story just in terms of like the cutscenes, as i say these very odd fmv sequences these collectible videos there's this whole section called the dead letters center or whatever it's like part of their office and it's just people who have sent in crazy letters to like this federal bureau kind of going like these dead presidents are telling me what to do every night or you know (laughs) i saw this weird thing happen and just reading all of those i could have just done it for hours i just wish that was like a whole library within the game (laughs) so like i love that man that's really cool there's a bit of me that's like i can't wait for control 2 when they've (laughs) polished up some of that kind of the technical stuff and they just go we can go so far into this world because the way everything's set up you know there's the gun the service weapon yeah so you only have one gun in the game which is subsequently upgraded or modified modified and altered change so, into yeah. different guns yeah. yeah so like the first thing that i well that anyone gets i suppose is like a essentially like a shotgun pistol version of it so it kind of okay. changes like that but it's the same gun and it doesn't run on ammunition it runs on energy and that replenishes yeah so you just you don't reload no. you just stop shooting yeah, for a bit basically. exactly yeah okay so that kind of leads us on quite nicely yeah. then Combat. combat combat is interesting combat is sort of satisfying to watch and to physically experience but not actually all that good that is very interesting yeah because, and again i'm thinking back to that e3 trailer that we saw last year in 2018 that the combat was totally what sold me on this i mean apart i mean apart from the crazy mad world mm-hmm. i was just like yes i am on board immediately yeah like you looked powerful and mad and you're ripping bits off walls and things like that big bits of concrete and just slamming them into enemies then pulling out your gun and shooting someone in the face and then just making someone hover for no reason yeah that all looked amazing that stuff is like don't get me but you're saying that's interesting to look at yeah it's maybe not necessarily very interesting to do or not very satisfying to do where i am at the moment yes that's that's pretty much where i'd put it so the the gunplay itself like the service weapon which is what it gets called in the game is like really fun to play with really cool animation but i have found at least that you can sort of effectively aim anywhere near the enemy and it sort of auto locks but it doesn't look like it's auto locking you just kind of hit them i've been shooting from the hip most of the time i've not gone into like looking down the barrel all that much so there's that part where it feels kind of loose and that's fine because it's it's not the type of game where you need like super precise headshots or whatever although you can kind of no, get no, no. bonuses yeah, and stuff not, that way we're not college yeah, yeah it's just know. kind of and because of the way that that stuff works often what happens is you'll run into a room and six guys will come out and some of them will have rifles and some of them will be kind of hurling stuff at you and really all you have to do is continuously move the game tells you this just keep moving all the time it's not really like a cover shooter. You just want to not get cornered or ambushed and you want to keep moving so that your bullets can recharge and you can keep unloading on them. Then not too far into the game, you unlock this launch power, which is like the telekinetic throwing stuff. Yeah. And that is like so extremely satisfying. Really? Like it's such a gorgeous bit of animation just where she whips things off the floor. I mean, it can be from a fire hydrant to, uh, sorry, like a fire extinguisher to a filing cabinet to a big bit of pipe or whatever, or she can just rip stuff out of the walls and the floor, like bits of cement. And you just, once you kind of get the hang of it, it's just a case of like hitting R1 to pull something out the ground, spin until you see your next enemy and release. And it's almost, it's certainly at this point in the game, it's almost always like one hit kills or substantially subdues them enough to just kill them in one shot. So all of that is great, but it just, there's something lacking in it as well because you're not, 
ever having to try it all that hard. And I've had battles now where there's tons of these hiss things and they're coming in wave after wave. Presumably you're just playing this on kind of normal difficulty. I'd, yeah, I didn't pick a difficulty it, setting. So oh, did you not? Okay. I, I don't think so, at least. So I, I'm assuming it's just a standard, like a normal mode. And you've game. never been in any danger of... I have died, no. It, oh, okay. Because you can make the wrong moves. Like if you if you run out an air room and you haven't realised that there's people coming behind you, you can be stuck and you can kind of get lit up pretty fast. Yeah. Your health isn't You just good. get kind of ambushed. Kind yeah, of but then that takes me on to another thing, which is like there's a lot of upgrades and collectibles and that kind of stuff going on in the game and one of the first things that i got and i don't know if it's by chance or if you just if it is one of the earliest things you get but was like a mod a personal mod rather than a gun mod which meant that so anytime you kill an enemy they drop health essentially and you can get this mod that boosts how much that replenishes your health each time okay and so with that equipped and it's the one of the first things i got and i've kept it equipped all the time like basically as long as i keep killing someone else i will always survive and so I've not really encountered any battles yet that I've been like, oh, this is extremely tough, except the first boss fight, which does another thing where everything I just said about continuously moving, which, as I say, the game tells you to do. It's like literally in the kind of prompts and during loading screens and stuff. The first boss fight, that's really like really not your best idea. Um, and I won't go into like the strategies for beating that particularly, but I, I was a bit like, oh, the game designs are a little wobbly here because you're doing things now and it's just after you've unlocked this power, but you don't really need it and stuff. So it's kind of things like that where you're just it all feels like slightly disjointed, but the actual experience of playing it, of just sitting and playing control, like it's totally immersive and really fun. And as I say, I just want to get further and further into this world, but there's just a lot of like little things about it that I think if you were being more critical or if it was a less interesting game world, would stack up a, a bit more than it does mm. so far. So, so it's kind of been saved on its narrative and its setting and its story. That, yeah. That's kind of what's, that's what's lifting up. And I don't mind that. No. I, I mean, if there's going to be something that's going to lift the game up for me, I would rather it be that. Absolutely, yeah. Of it, you know? That, that's certainly what gets me interested in games. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can put up with kind of minor annoyances and technical problems, do you know what I mean? And mechanics to enjoy a world and enjoy a story, do you know what I mean? So if it's, if it's still telling that story well and it's still i mean if it's not unfun to play yeah, basically, yeah. like i'm 100 still in that's it like don't get me wrong at all with what i'm saying here i know it might sound a little bit negative like this is extremely fun to play so far and as i say i've still got so much to unlock and so much to explore and discover it just as i say there's wee kind of wobbly bits and it's just when you're putting it in comparison with other sort of major games particularly like third person action games on the playstation of late your spider-man's your god of wars and i think in some ways the key comparison is with resident evil 2 oh that's interesting because it has elements of that kind of like metroidvania-esque like well well it was supposed to be the remedy specifically said that the game was designed as a metroidvania-esque experience yeah and you see that happening around you although it's not always that well enforced but you know there's like uh, different control gates and all that kind of stuff one very specific thing i wanted to ask you yeah yeah yeah. as the map is garbage as i've read that it is the actual like the the end game map yeah it's not good <laughs> like i've just not used it a lot and i think that that pays pays really well into that comparison with re2 where i felt like when we were playing that what what you mean the greatest game map in the history of the world superb game map. absolutely brilliant. and how often did we sit there and kind of bring up the map and work out what we we're yeah. trying to do and the rooms change color when you picked up everything yeah which for i mean we discussed my obsessive compulsive disorder yeah. in fire emblem last week that mechanic in that game was like a godsend yeah. for me. I swear to God. <laughs> well, control has all of that. It, ha- it will give you your obsessive compulsiveness because it's doing it to me because you just want to find stuff and you want to find all yeah. these little chests and stuff. But yeah, the map doesn't really reveal any of that. There's often been It was more about it being confusing to, to, to use, yeah, to navigate to look at, yeah. rather than specifically not. I mean, I don't necessarily want everything to be given away. No, know, no. But, but just if, if you can't use the map to easily navigate around, I mean, that's the point of a map is... In, in, in a video yeah. game or real life is to literally know where you're going yeah absolutely <laughs> and if you can't derive that from the map then something's went wrong you can't always know the game does enough in, within itself to show you where to go anyway and like you can generally follow the you know the bits that are red means there's guys up ahead or whatever but there's just like there's things like that all the way through the puzzles so far are just like non-existent it's kind of really pathetic video game puzzle stuff oh, really? which is like okay. fine not that that's a big part of the game but again com- in comparison to re2 where you were trying to find those like medallions or whatever or, like piece together things it just doesn't have as much going on in in that sense as like re2 did so it's, it's lacking in certain ways but it's 
it's so interesting and there's still so much to come that like I'm not writing it off at all like I think the review scores it's been getting roughly like an 8 is pretty much bang on like I think there's been some forgiveness made for it there uh, from critics because it's so interesting as a world but if you were just reviewing it straight up on its gameplay and on its like technical specs it would probably drop a little bit but man just exploring this world is worth it That, that alone is worth the entry fee nice one man nice one well, the only thing that I've been playing this week is Undertale. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Yay! Which we will come on to in our topic of the week, because that was our play-along game for this month. But right now, it's time for the news. All right, and news item number one. Telltale Games, Lewis. Telltale Games has been revived. Revived. It is back from the dead. Telltale Games was shut down last year, September last year, very unceremoniously. A lot of the employees... In fact, or all of the employees were let go without severance because they never had a union, and is one of the main players, or is one of the main reasons for the uproar for unionization in the games industry. It was because of what happened to Telltale Games. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been revived. It seems by a bunch of people who never actually had anything to do with the original <laughs> Telltale uh, games. But I, I think that this is a good thing. I think that this is a good thing. I think that there's been unnecessary controversy kind of drudged up because of this but ultimately if you can get that studio back up and running in those ip that you had particularly they've said that they've kept the wolf among us ip which was well received among the telltale games and the batman ip which is a big ip although the game in itself wasn't brilliant as far as the telltale Mm. games go sadly the walking dead telltale games that's now owned by skybound skybound games who took on the responsibility of that ip after tel- the original Telltale went under. Well, this is going to get very confusing with new Telltale and old Telltale. Reboots and remasters. Yeah, exactly. God almighty. <laughs> no, they took on the responsibility of getting that game finished for the fans, which I thought was which I thought was a really good move by them, really player-focused move. So, mm. I mean, fair play to Skybound for that. But yeah, there, seem, there seemed to be a lot of cynicism around this, and perhaps that is justified to a certain extent. But I mean, let's not bury it before they've, yeah. they've, they've shown their hand here you know i mean what, what do you think about all this I, I i can see why there's a bit of controversy around it so we should say it's, it's being headed up the new telltale by jamie otley and brian waddle with a company called lcg entertainment we're taking certainly i'm taking this from a polygon article uh, which yeah so po- polygon broke this polygon yeah broke. yeah so we'll include the links to this in the show notes on players2.com but yeah like it seems to be the criticism is essentially that they've come in they're taking a the name of a studio that they had nothing to do with and they're yeah, kind of going probably to, quite cheap in reality yeah so. and they're going to use that to try and make a quick buck as, as the kind of accusation that's being leveled we have no idea what their plans really are for the studio well they've said that they want to make new games they've said that they're going to bring back ip as i mentioned like the wolf mm-hmm. among us and batman they've also said that although it's only freelance contracts just now but i mean in reality this is a fledgling yeah business but they're offering freelance contracts to any original telltale staff that wanted to come back although it was so way back in september where they were cut without severance so i yeah. imagine a lot of those people have moved on and got different jobs and whatever and and absolutely fair enough but i think i mean i think that they're doing the right thing here although it is only i mean people will be like oh well it's only freelance contracts you can't expect to give up like a full-time position for that and i mean yeah yeah i mean yeah. absolutely of course you're not but if they did want to do that at least at least they're leaving that door open for them i mean i think again, as a fledgling business, can they really be expected to do much more than that? Probably not, no. I mean, they can't really have much money at all other than their kind of startup cash at the moment. And yeah, like you say, if if if, they, if that is an open offer to any former employee, then that's something, if it's a bit more restricted than that, then that's maybe slightly more problematic. But at least they're being open and having a dialogue about it, which is better than we might expect some companies to behave. Um, yeah, they also, I think there was mentioned that they were going to redo the engine as well, which I know was a big problem yeah, for the original Telltale, which, <laughs> was, which was janky as all hell. Yeah. Um, and I think actually hindered them a lot in the long run, along with kind of bad managerial decisions yeah. was kind of the main reason why the original Telltale went down. Uh, what I will say as well, that af- after that article and after there was some kind of shade thrown at this and a bit of cynicism and a bit of, well, it's not really the old Telltale and it's not the label of Telltale games that made those games, it was yeah. the people there. But in actual fact, I think that the people well, from like The Walking Dead era when they like burst onto the scene where that first Telltale was Walking Dead, the mm-hmm. one game of the year awards like i think the staff from that era were long gone before yeah. the company ever went under you know 
but nonetheless, they've they've got this name, which obviously means a lot to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It speaks directly towards a type of game as well. But uh, what I was going to say was that Polygon, after this and after again some shade was kind of thrown, was actually a piece where they got in contact with a lot of the ex-employees. And from what they're saying, it seems to be that a lot of ex-employees are kind of responding positively to this, although maybe slightly wary. But I mean, I really only think that's a good thing. More people making more games. What's the fucking problem? Absolutely. All right, moving on. And news item number two. A new NBA 2K20 trailer has set the world the lightless. Uh, it was a trailer for their My Team mode, which blatantly advertised slot machines, pachinko machines, and Wheel of Fortune style mechanics in their My Team mode. And the most brazen show of uh, loot boxes and gambling mechanics in a game I think I've ever seen. And this from a company who also launched an casino <laughs> And GTA 5. <laughs> and yet somehow, somehow this was worse. <laughs> this is I mean, it truly was, it something, was isn't it? absolutely <laughs> bizarre. So it was a, a initially released on NBA 2K's uh, YouTube channel. There, there seemed to be a, a chat that the video was taken down. However, I, I found it quite easily. I think you found it quite easily. So I don't yeah. know if it was then put back up. But I know that there was another trailer put back up as well. Because the first one got 19,000 thumbs down but then this new trailer seems to be much more on the positive spectrum so i'm not quite sure what's happened there i don't know if they've changed the trailer slightly maybe Mm. they've removed some of that stuff anyway yeah this was i mean this was bad right it's completely tone deaf (laughs) like (laughs) i don't know how they have managed to survive in the games industry this long and not understand what reaction this was going to get honestly i think that ea get a lot of shit for this and and i mean quite honestly rightfully so Mm. particularly because it was quote unquote their fault that this all kind of kicked off with, <laughs> ba- with Battlefront 2 however I really think that Take 2 are becoming the most egregious offenders here very quickly and Activision I actually think that EA are doing a lot to kind of backtrack oh, the damage absolutely. that they've yeah. done whereas Activision and Take 2 are just like marching on yeah particularly Take 2 again with the the casino in GTA 5 recently and now this and I mean it was just it, it was it was literally a slot machine Lewis mm. it was mad now this was only a trailer it is yet to be seen if we can use real money on this. However, I would be willing to bet my left bollock that <laughs> it fucking definitely will. Anyway, subsequently, this got the attention of Peggy, the... What were the... What, I don't even know what the, You would describe Peggy as the kind of regulator, kind of gaming regulator that does the... Games ratings. Classifications yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for the games. Most desperately trying it's, to a, it's the European Video Game Content Rating System. There you go. So content rating system. So this is basically what decides whether or not your game's for three-year-olds or 18-year-olds. And currently NBA 2K20 is for three-year-olds with slot machines in it. So I wonder how that sits with many of our listeners here. <laughs> However, they came out with a statement which was just glorious. Now, this is a bit of a long one, but buckle up. Yeah, settle in. We have seen the announcement trailer of NBA 2K20 and noticed the controversy it has caused. We feel it is important to carefully explain when certain content is triggering the gambling descriptor in the PEGI system, but also to show when it does not at this moment. A video game gets the gambling content descriptor if it contains moving images that encourage and or teach the use of games of chance that are played stroke carried out as traditional means of gambling. We use a help text to clarify this in more detail. This refers to types of betting or gambling for money that is normally played or carried out in casinos, gambling halls or racetracks. This does not cover games where betting or gambling is simply part of the general storyline. The game must actually teach the player how to gamble or bet and or encourage the player to want to gamble or bet for money in real life. For example, this will include games that teach the player how to play card games that are usually played for money or how to play the odds in horse racing. It is important to stress that the controversial imagery played a central role in the trailer but it may not necessarily necessarily do so in the game, which has not yet been released. At this point in time, Peggy can only comment on the trailer that has been made publicly available. The trailer includes imagery that is generally known from casinos, Wheel of Fortune, slot machines. Using this sort of mechanic to select an item or character or action by chance is not the same as teaching how to gamble for money in a casino. These differences currently prevent us from applying the gambling descriptor. But we are very aware that it may get too close for comfort for some people, and that is part of an internal discussion that Peggy is having for the moment. The games industry is evolving constantly and rapidly in recent years. As a rating organisation, we need to ensure that these developments are reflected in our classification criteria. We do not base our decisions on the content of a single trailer, but we will properly assess how the rating system and the video games industry in general should address these concerns. I'm glad that this has got Peggy's attention. 
However, that is the biggest lot of waffle I think I've ever had. <laughs> it's just skirting and dancing around the issue, and it's just absolutely crazy that it's coming to this. I'm glad that it's getting Peggy's attention. It sounds as if they're almost hamstrung by their own rules and that they by their definition of gambling this isn't a problem or nothing can be done about this because our rules don't yeah. dictate this more than and, anything and, and they've also said that the gaming industry is evolving and in recent years rapidly mm. and it's like well it's your fucking responsibility to move with it yeah do you know what i mean that's so change change true, your yeah. change your rules and sort this out because this is totally unacceptable. I mean, look at look at that image. Just turn my laptop <laughs> right here. It is a massive image of a basketball themed slot machine. Yeah, I mean, it's bizarre that they think that that is appropriate for a three plus year old. I think that what Peggy are really saying there is that until this is actually part of a game that is being released, they can't do much about it. Like they've said that they can't react. Yeah, they to can't. Trailers. They can't commentary on the trailer. But, but, I mean, but it, because they also they use this line uh, to select an item or character or action by chance is not the same as teaching how to gamble for money in a casino. But that doesn't look like that is selecting an item or a character or whatever that is something spinning in order to win something you see it in the reaction that the guy in the trailer this has. image actually has a handle that yeah it actually has a handle yeah it's like a one arm band it's, we it's all ridiculous. know what it is and they know what it is they just can't do anything yet but like surely 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 this is going to get hammered well you would have thought so but there's a lot of powerful people probably <laughs> lobbying against that anyway moving on a news item number three and something a bit more cheery it is all but being confirmed that there's going to be a new resident evil game hurrah it's currently being called Project Resistance, with the RE highlighted in red. There will be a teaser trailer shown on September the 9th. However, there has already been images leaked from that trailer, which seem to have led to a lot of speculation that it's going to be a four-player co-op game, or at least a co-op game kind of similar to the Resident Evil Outbreak games. Games? Was it? Was, it, was there more than one of that, or was it the think, only one? I think uh, it, it came out in the PS2. I remember it was one of the first games that seriously took on uh, having like an online mode. And it has also been confirmed that the new game, whatever it is, uh, will be shown at the Tokyo Game Show as well, which is, I think, uh, towards the end of September. That's right, yeah. I think there only was one Resident Evil outbreak from all I can was see. Was there? Okay, so we might be looking at a sequel to that or something, some sort of spiritual successor or something in that vein seems to be the speculation. Yeah. Thoughts on this? I mean, it's pretty cool. I, I can't say I'm massively interested in an online multiplayer game in this universe particularly, but given how kind of popular other sort of co-op zombie slaying games have been recently particularly world war z i can see why they'd want to enter that space if they are doing that then i hope it's this is just like another line in the kind of fracturing of resident evil where we might get remakes we might get proper mainline story games following re7 i would very much have preferred this this to be re8 well totally honest me me too yeah yeah. but if it's you know if it's a wee standalone thing fair enough i I don't know i just can't imagine (laughs) us picking up a four-player online co-op game in this universe like survival horror is one thing but like i'm not that bothered about zombie (laughs) games or the re lore particularly no no no, i mean apart from resident evil basically i can't think of a single zombie game that I've wanted to play yeah. in a very long time. So apart from the Resident Evil series, Resident Evil is the only zombies for me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's cool that we'll be getting some news about it pretty soon. Yeah, um, definitely. So uh, as we record this, it's less than a week away. Yeah. Less than a week away. All right, and news item number four. A leaked official Overwatch-themed Switch case uh, seems to have leaked on Amazon, which is absolutely bizarre. I mean, Amazon really just are constantly dropping the ball totally. on these leaks. It's, it's Or Walmart Canada. Walmart Canada is another <laughs> famous one, aren't they? Uh, yeah, so Overwatch, not currently on Switch, uh, but it's been long rumoured that there would be a port... It was published on Twitter by Wario64, but was delisted very, very quickly thereafter. And there's going to be a Nintendo Direct tomorrow as we record this, in fact. So on the 4th of September will be the Direct. And BlizzCon, the Blizzard convention, shockingly, is in November this year as well. So maybe we get a wee announcement at one of those things. It'd be pretty cool if it was tomorrow, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I've, by the sounds of it, they're going to be focusing on Pokemon and Luigi's Mansion on that. But still, it'd be nice if right at the end it was just like Overwatch. Yeah, because it doesn't feel like they have... Uh like a one more thing at the moment which they usually do in this in the uh, direct they usually you know? do in the bigger directs unless it was well one of those remember they did a standalone one for pokemon mm-hmm. and then they did a standalone one before that for smash yeah so yeah if it's if just a general direct they do normally have a kind of one more thing but yeah they they don't have that here i just don't know if blizzard would want to be 
in control of that would want to make that announcement on their terms at their conference yeah. you know what I mean but at the same time it's Nintendo and Nintendo do what Nintendo do you know yeah. what I mean <laughs> I, I could see it being the one more thing on tomorrow's direct and then it gets followed cool. up maybe yeah. it gets launched during BlizzCon or something like that just see a wee up. image of Tracer or something yeah. like that you know what I mean just like a wee simple thing and then they maybe show off more gameplay or whatever yeah. at um, BlizzCon exactly. yeah, I can see, I can see yeah. something like that happening but it would be cool uh, however but, I, when you listen to this dear listener you will know if we're just talking <laughs> shit or not so <laughs> because please forgive us yeah Nintendo Directs seem to be conveniently timed that it's always the day after we do recordings so uh, there we go do you think you'd play would you play Overwatch uh, probably not Overwatch you? is 100% passed over my head I think it came out when I wasn't playing games a huge amount see be honest with you man it came out at a time when I was very much getting back into games mm. but I wasn't really or getting back into games in like a big way and I wasn't really interested at that time in a first person shooter and I was just like ah mm. done with this not really that interested and, and since then it's absolutely taken over the fucking world <laughs> so yeah it totally, it totally passed me by as well maybe if it was on Switch and again it's always it's always like so cheap yeah maybe I will give it a wee let's, let's we'll see what they say bash. tomorrow then just when it comes on to Switch it just feels as if <laughs> it's the best thing in the world yeah. just anything on the Switch is better alright just a couple of shout outs there's been a lot of games coming out recently Lewis <laughs> First of all, Man of Medan came out. This from Supermassive Games of... Until Dawn. Until Dawn fame. Thank you very much, Lewis. 70 on Metacritic for PS4 and Xbox, and 74 on PC. Mm, tepid, tepid reviews, yeah. I would say. I think I don't think it's as good as what I thought it could have been. However, I'm still pretty interested in playing it. Don't be a slave to that Metacritic, people. <laughs> I'm still pretty interested in playing it, and I'm pretty interested in playing it with you because I know that it has like a couch co-op yeah. facility, so maybe we can get it and Absolutely. have, a, have like, a wee go. It's not put me off one bit. Until Dawn, I thought it was a really fun experience, and this is the first one in this anthology, so I can see dipping in and out of different you know different episodes in this series just seeing what works and what doesn't like i'm up for that it's not not too expensive a thing and there's bound to be something interesting about it even if it's not yeah a exactly knockout, so this is know? going to be an anthology and i would quite like to get in the ground level yeah here, you yeah, know what yeah. i mean just in case the next one's like an absolute storm well, exactly yeah <laughs> they have announced the details for the second one so it's going, oh, to, be, it's going oh. to be called little hope and it's coming out um in 2020 oh, man, i think awesome. they originally that. said that it was about six months apart so it'll probably be early in 2020 cool and i know that will poulter uh, a british actor i think is playing the lead in it but we don't know much about the story cool at this man point. Yeah. that's awesome yeah. that's awesome really cool next up was Blair Witch also came out this week 71 on PC 78 on Xbox seems to be a wee bit more walking sim than I was anticipating again it's not massively put me off if I'm totally honest with you uh, if I can pick it up relatively cheap at some point I reckon I probably would not sure that I'm going to have a lot of time to get around to it just now <laughs> because of the torrent of games that have come out Absolutely. but uh, yeah no definitely definitely want to keep an eye on Next up was Catherine Fullbody. This is the remake of Catherine, the cult classic from the kind of PS3 Xbox generation. Currently sitting at a 71 on Metacritic for the PS4. Something that I'd kind of looked into a few years back, never really picked it up. Then the remake was getting made, then it caused a bit of controversy. So I kind of don't really know how you feel about the game anymore, but I'm still quite interested in playing it at some point. I think you should feel ashamed of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up is the Final Fantasy VIII Remake, an absolute classic, sitting at an 82 on the PS4. I mean, it's one of the weirder Final Fantasy games, I would say. It's, yeah. probably, it's, one of, it's the only Final Fantasy game Lewis Camley has ever owned. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to this but, day. <laughs> to this day. But yeah, it's, it's a kind of strange Final Fantasy game, but it's a damn good game. If, if you're interested in Final Fantasy at all, definitely go and check it out. And all the buzz here is that this is the best version of it ever, so that's cool. There you go, man. There you go. And finally, just wanted to mention the free games for this month. So on your Xbox Games with Gold, you get Hitman, the complete first season. This is the kind of first one of the soft reboot that was released in these uh, this episodic format, which by all accounts was absolutely brilliant. So if you've got an Xbox, definitely check that out. And also We Were Here, which is a game I've never heard of. And if you're on PlayStation Plus, you get Batman, Arkham Knight, and Darksiders 3. Superb uh, series of games there. Hitman, I've played on PlayStation and really enjoyed it. And as I mentioned a few weeks ago, got really excited about Hitman 2 for some reason. So definitely check that out. Um, and Arkham Knight is Arkham Knight. It's not the best in that series, but it's absolutely... For a free game? Come on. <laughs> got to try it. Got it. And I just wanted to end on a kind of... Well, on a very sad note here, I just wanted to mention that we are very aware of the allegations going around right now 
in the games industry, uh, particularly the rape allegations against uh, Jeremy Soule, who was the composer of the music on games like Guild Wars and Skyrim, and uh, similar allegations against Alec Holovka, is that, is that how we're saying that? To, who was one of the leading guys, one of the main coders on Night in the Woods, among other kind of small indie games. Two women have accused Jeremy Soule of rape, uh, which he denies, and Zoe Quinn of Gamergate fame has then come forward off the back of the courage of these other two women and accused Alec Hol- Holovka, I really cannot say this man's <laughs> name, which is very unfortunate, Alec Holovka uh, of sexual assault as well. Uh, the Night in the Woods team subsequently t- cut ties with Holovka and have apparently cancelled an upcoming game which he was working on. They also explained to their Kickstarter backers that it was more than this one allegation that caused them to make that decision. However, this story gets even sadder because on Sunday it was announced that Alec Kolovka had actually passed away and this family released this statement. Alec Kolovka, my brother and best friend, passed away this morning. Those who know me will know that I believe survivors and I have always done everything I can to support survivors, those suffering from mental illnesses and those with chronic illnesses. Alec was a victim of abuse and he also spent a lifetime battling mood and personality disorders. I will not pretend that he was not also responsible for causing harm, but deep down he was a person who wanted only to offer people care and kindness. It took him a while to figure out how. It's also worth pointing out as well that the family have said that no one should be using their grief as an excuse to attack attack anyone. They have reiterated that Alec specifically said that they that he wanted the best for Zoe. Uh, although it's not explicitly stated anywhere, it very much sounds as if he's taken his own life in this situation, which just makes it at all even more sadder. I don't want to shy away from issues like this, but at the same time I feel very ill-equipped to really properly discuss them. So I'll just say uh, to these women, we both 100% believe their claims. They do not deserve ridicule or any any kind of hardship for coming forward. Um, if you have been a victim of any kind of assault like this, please, please reach out to someone. Please go and seek help. Please tell someone it was the best thing that you can do and if you're someone who does have dark thoughts or suicidal thoughts please also please 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 seek help it is definitely the best thing you can do and on that there are not loose beers. Beers. <laughs> and we are back with topic of the week now i realize that we've come from a very heavy topic to to this but we're keeping it lighter now we're keeping it lighter it's very difficult to do transitions away from stuff like that, so we're just ploughing straight on with it. And topic of the week this week is our play along with Undertale. Now, Undertale is an almost universally loved cult classic. It's a, it's a great little indie RPG. It's a really muted colour palette, really simple 16-bit style game. Really beautifully done, really elegantly done. Uh, and Lewis Campbell, you didn't like it. <laughs> Straight in. Um, yeah. Matt- oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to <laughs> frame this. Like, I'm not saying that you didn't like it. I'm just saying Defend that you may, yourself, you, 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 may, you may not like it as much as others would have expected you to. Yeah. Including myself. Including, <laughs> including myself. So oh, there you go. There I, you go. I first played this, I think just before Christmas, maybe? Like, yeah, yeah. Like I think a, you did. Play a good it long time year, ago yeah. now. For exactly that Cause, reason. Because full disclosure, that's the first time I started playing it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> This is a game that I, like, I'd spent so long reading about and kind of being interested in, and it finally came to Switch, and I just thought, this is you know this is the time to play it. it I didn't ever play much on my old laptop on Steam, so came to Switch, and I thought, here we go, I'm going to get into this. I've heard so much about it, particularly given that it's driven by narrative and driven by morality and choices. Yeah. I thought, this And is- also made by one guy, yeah. which I should have mentioned at the beginning. It's, the game is entirely made by one man, uh, Toby Fox, and as far as I'm concerned, they've done a hell of a job. Yeah. Lewis? Well, <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I want to clarify, first of all, that I don't think that this is a bad game by any stretch. And I think... No, I, I, think, I think I've unfairly no, 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 set the yeah. scene here, to be honest. But, You're trying yeah. to entertain the people. I, I am. Tell. Be entertained, um, people. <laughs> I think it's got a lot of interesting things going on in it. It's got a lot of interesting mechanics. I think the story that it's telling, once you kind of get into it, is well done and interesting. I This is the, the headline, I suppose, is that I found that it was wasting my time. That okay. That, that's quite. That's quite a statement. There was a long pause there, which will be cut out in the edit. But that that's really interesting. Why did you think that the game? So what? I suppose what about the game made you feel as if you were wasting your time? Several things. First of all, I just cannot bear random 
battles. I cannot. They were so handle minimal it. as well. I know. They were so minimal. So, couple of that. I mean, it wasn't Pokemon. I mean, if you walk no. through the long grass in Pokemon, fuck me. Right. It, it wasn't like that at all. Okay, but at least in Pokemon, there's a function to all of that. You battle, your player gets, or your, your po- Pokemon, I was going to call them Pocket Monsters there, good grief, of aged 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> your Pokemon gets stronger and you capture them potentially. Um, but you get stronger by fighting the monsters. If you fight them. Yes. So, so again, one of the key mechanics of this game is that you can choose to fight the monsters or you can choose to have a passive run where you can basically talk them out of battle. Yeah. Or you can do a kind of hybrid of both of those things. And you can do a hybrid of both of those um, things. And so it's, it's that essentially that I was not necessarily intentionally playing a pacifist run to begin with. Um, I didn't actually know that there was kind of all these different ways of playing it when I first got started, but I found, you know, a bit of the way through that I wasn't really attacking anyone. So I continued to do that. But what it means is that you get all these random battles where for ages you're just pressing the same buttons, the same commands over and over and over again to try and essentially get to a point where you can spare them and get out of it. Or you flee and you don't get any money. Like, at first, that was all fine. But but the part of it, I mean, one of the best parts of this is the way that you do that and the kind of mini game that you play while you're fighting. Mm -hmm. So the the whole battle mechanic is absolutely ingenious, I think. I'll give you that, 100%. It's absolutely genius. You effectively playing a small bullet hell game for the most part to keep your wee heart alive. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, which is which is all as it's just moving a wee heart around to try and avoid a bullet hell situation yeah. in a tiny little box, and it, it's just ingenious in the way that it kind of married with the with the gameplay and what was happening on the screen and the way that the the, the enemies and the characters were talking. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I mean that that for me was one of the strongest parts of the game. A hundred percent. That you're totally right there. The way that those battles are handled within that kind of bullet hell little box that you get. It's, it's and the creativity in that yeah, exactly. well. like the of, I mean that might sound a bit dull and a bit boring and initially when you start playing the game you might also think that but then as the game progresses the amount of different things that Toby Fox is, is done with that and the creativity and just limiting yourself to that little box and what you can do with it is is staggering like and i thought a lot of it married so beautifully to the gameplay it was just it was just fabulous it was absolutely great like i loved the battle mechanics of this so much so that's so interesting to me that you're saying that it's essentially though because i just didn't want to be in any of those situations once i reached the point where i was like all i'm trying to do here is to get out of every single battle and i don't want to just flee them all uh because then you don't get any money and you kind of need that later I just felt like I was clicking the same stuff and I stopped even reading the dialogue that was coming up because it was just like... I see you made a mistake. No, because it's so repetitive though. See, if you're in a... So I was uh, in replaying it over the last few days. There was one bit I was fighting against like a guard dog thing and it's like it once petted. But it once petted like seven times. So you just no, no, no. do that no, no, again no, 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 and again no, no. and again. You, you need to, no, I, I think you did that wrong because I know the dog and you need, you need to like lure it close and then you pet it and then you do... Then you do something else, then you pet it again. Like there's only there's only ever like a combination of three things that you basically have to no, do. No, no, there's loads more than that. Unless I was getting them all wrong, in which case it's wasting my time even further. But <laughs> there's times where you're you're in a battle for. I what? mean, part of the, part of the thing is to try and figure out what it wants you to do, and part of the yeah. part of the thing that tells you what it wants to do is, is the, the dialogue. dialogue. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but so much of that is still just like you've told someone their joke is bad and they react badly to that and then you wait and then you say it again and that is the thing you're supposed to do or whatever but you just have to do it multiple times but the whole time I'm sitting there going I just want out of this I don't want to be having this battle and I just want to continue on because the actual the overworld story and and everything that's going on is interesting enough that you want to progress couple that then with the the writing and I know this is going to be super controversial but I, I don't like I get that it's trying to be funny and I know that it's trying to be charming but I just wanted it to stop quite a lot of the time i was so unbelievably charmed by this yeah game. i genuinely genuinely laughed at this game a number of times where that is super 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 rare for me in any video game for like me what were you at. laughing at it was just it was clever and stupid at the same time yeah you know what i mean it was kind of clever internet type humor mm. and it was quite meta as well in a lot of ways and it was calling out a lot of like real world stuff and like video game tropes. Yeah, and it was calling out to you, the player, a lot. And there was a lot of kind of uh, kind of subtle fourth wall breaking, or not so subtle fourth wall breaking in certain situations. And like like you said, it it was going for charming, and I was totally charmed by it. Like I was totally charmed. Yeah, by it. fair enough. Like I, I was charmed in places, but again, I just I, 
maybe I was just playing it in the wrong headspace or trying to get through it too quickly. But there was just so many points where I was like, I'm reading this another sign about a dog or this mouse that's trying to eat this cheese, and I just don't care about any of this, and it's not leading anywhere. And that like I'm making myself sound so much harsher about it than I actually am. Like I just I just didn't love it as a gameplay experience. However, like by the end and really in the final kind of battle and when all the, the real plot stuff starts to unravel, I was suddenly like, well, this is really interesting. So, yeah, I, I mean, we, 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 can spoil, the- we can spoil this. By yeah, the way. there's going to be spoilers on this, by the way, from five minutes ago. Yeah. So, so what what about the final battle then was suddenly impressing you in the way that the rest of the game wasn't? I don't I don't even want to say this in the way that the rest of the game wasn't. I just really loved the kind of the turn like the when you start to discover what's really happening and who you are in relation to is it Asgore, is that how we're saying that? The like the lead kind of villain, the king guy. Yeah. Who's a nice man? Yeah. Yeah. So there's like when that part is revealed and then when Flowey or Flowey or however we're saying that. Uh, again, Flowery, I think is like, how we're saying that. When when that turns up again and goes completely mental. So did you finish that last boss fight? Yeah. See, I didn't, I have not finished that. Aha. Uh-huh, okay. So, so am I missing something? Yet? Well, this is when, it, so it all is. So, so let's just set the scene here. Right? Yeah. There's, there's the final boss, which you think is Asgore. And then subsequently, Flowery, who you meet in the very first, is the very first interaction that you have in this world, mm-hmm. kind of comes back and sees its power and goes like batshit crazy. Yeah. Is the is the super final boss, and the animation in that bit is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I really love it. It that. is wild. Yeah, uh, yeah, and goes absolutely apeshit and is much much harder and is much and is completely different boss fight to any boss fight that you that you have in the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. However, at the time when that came up for me, it was twenty past two in the morning. <laughs> And also, it does a thing on Steam, and it can't have done the same thing on Switch, I imagine, where it shuts the game down as like a kind of meta thing uh-huh. that happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't realise this at first, and I went ballistic, because I thought that I'd <laughs> lost the final battle, <laughs> and we'd have to do the final battle again. However, subsequently when I turned it back on, and again, this is all happening at like two in the morning, yeah, right? Yeah. So when I turned the game back on, and it came up, and it was like, Flowery was, was there to fight me, and I was like, oh, I see what's happened here. It was a clever game thing where they, they shut everything yep. down. That was fine. So then I went on to try and beat Flowery and he fucking scalped me just immediately. And then the game shut down again. Yeah. And then every time I lost, the game shut down. Which on Steam is a is a bit more effort than I'm really willing to put in it yeah. to the reopen the game every time that I lose. Yeah. It's a wee bit annoying. So I'd be interested to know what actually happened on Switch. Have I you lost. <laughs> I can't totally remember. I think it must have put it back to the the title screen. It didn't shut the whole game down. I don't think yeah, you just so had to kind of like, load it again. Like closed the whole thing. The, whole like thing. the application closed. Mm, that's not good. Well, it's not. It's not not good. It's it's quite clever and it's quite ingenious. It's just that at that particular you, moment, like I basically beasted the whole game in one sitting. Yeah. I got to this point at two in the morning where it was shutting the application down, and I was just like. I have work at the moment. Yeah. This is now irresponsible. Did you feel like your time was being wasted by chance? Um, I did at that point, but I never, I never once felt like that before. Yeah. Like I was excited to stay up to keep playing that game and to keep finishing it to see where it all went. That's good. I mean, I, I'm really glad that you've had that reaction to it because it's the reaction that I wanted and kind of expected to have at the end of all of that. You know, it, the game in effect kind of resets and you can play again in a, another run and things are slightly different or can be so slightly different. one thing I will say, is, so I, as I alluded to earlier, I actually started this game in, oh, I don't know, it was, it was before Christmas last year, mm-hmm. right? And I got a wee bit into it. I never really stuck with it at the time. I was playing other things. It was a stupid time to start the game, really. And I just, I just fell away from it and then I came back to do this play along and I was excited to do it as well. I was like, yes, I'm probably going to get into it this time. So I'm going to restart my game. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to stop that one. And I'm going to start a new game. And they acknowledged that in the dialogue in the game. Really? Yeah. They, they, I can't remember what it was. So with Flowery at the start was like saying something, I think it was something like about abusing your power or something like that. And there was subtle things said in the game where it was like that, that us, someone like you came through here before kind of, yeah. di- I mean, it wasn't that, but it was kind of that sort of dialogue. And I was like, God, that's really good. It's, it's, again, it's kind of like meta stuff like mm-hmm. that that I just quite like in a lot of these games like that. I mean, don't get me wrong, like some of it can be a bit nonsense and stuff, but I thought it was done really tastefully and quite well and very cleverly within the dialogue and the story that they were trying to tell in the game. And yeah, I, I thought it was great. Like, I really, And again, from that point, I was like, oh, this okay, this is quite clever, right? Yeah. yeah this has obviously been done in a clever way. 
you know like it's it's super well programmed like you say there's so much going on in it so many systems and and interesting kind of mechanics like that at work uh, that's in my second playthrough which i'm in just now um which so i was trying to play along for this having already beat it and i thought i'll, I'll just kind of spoil essentially what happened with me where i attacked one enemy in the whole game before i realized that the pacifist run was a thing and when i say oh i attack too uh, yeah. when i say enemy it was actually the dummy right at the beginning of the game which you're more or less a told to attack oh no way yeah oh i attacked three then yeah i actually killed the the, the, the woman the, the first really <laughs> yeah, and i felt really horrible about that throughout the entirety of the rest of the game like jesus because i never thought she was going to die when i defeated her because it was like i was like oh yeah this this is obviously like just some sort of training thing and then she's going to move out of the way when because it was all to do with like oh you're not powerful enough and it was yeah. just like oh i'm just going to show her how powerful i am then she'll move out of the way no she fucking died so that was the end of her <laughs> Did that, not, that must have had some bearing at the end of the game and stuff then right well she wasn't in the end of the game yes Ew. I know, right? Okay. Um, well, yeah, so I, like, my whole kind of run was spoiled by this one thing that I hadn't even understood that had happened Can I just say, before. I don't think that you can start off doing a pacifist run. I think that you have to do a neutral run before you can do a pacifist run. I don't know, possibly. I don't see why that would be the case, but... Um, um, maybe it's because of the dummy. I mean, it's still there on my second playthrough. I just ignored it. Like, yeah. I just, you just don't attack it. You do the same as you do with everything else. So playing it through again now, um, I wanted to see if I could get the pacifist ending and you get a lot of that meta stuff again of them going, oh, I didn't... I haven't I met you before and yeah yeah so it's all I mean that stuff. I don't know to what extent they're referring to the, the thing original is that I was only very human, shortly into the game so the only person yeah. that did that with me was that woman that I, yeah. that I killed the, the like cow woman that you meet at the very beginning <laughs> yeah like I, I do want to kind of get through it again and see because I think there's a, there's more than two endings there's, I think there's three or four at I least, think there's but, not I know that there's a pacifist there's also a true pacifist ending yeah. and there's a genocide run yeah as well which is where you just kill everyone yeah and I, but I think you'd like because my ending I guess was somewhere between the two because I attacked something yeah you would have got a neutral ending yeah. and I got a neutral ending but the, the one issue I'm having in my second playthrough is that the bullet hell bit is not any good when your left Joy-Con is completely fucked. <laughs> uh, and so I don't think Joy-Con I'll, drift. I don't think I'll be it's able to come full circle. It. Yeah. It's come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you can play Cuphead with that joystick, but you can't play fucking well, Undertale. Ma- maybe I can't anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you got something out of playing Undertale. Hopefully, you enjoyed it like me and didn't hate it and spit on its grave like Lewis. Uh, yeah, I hope you played it at least. Like, I hope you had a reaction to it because it is the kind of game we're told to love and I didn't and that's fine. Yeah, I suppose there's a certain expectation that you yeah. would love this game and you didn't and that is, and you know what, man? That is okay. That is okay that you didn't love this game. I mean, you're obviously wrong, <laughs> you? but it's okay that you didn't love it. And I suppose we should mention our game for next month. We're just continuing this series of picking one game each month to play along. I'm actually really, really enjoying it, going back and playing some of these classic indie games. And our next game is going to be a game that you turned me on to, Lewis, and that game is Braid. Yep, Braid is a puzzle and platforming game developed by Number None. It's, I think, one of the most interesting, one of the maybe most iconic indie games, uh, certainly of the last few years. It was certainly an indie game that i played that i was like oh yeah this is this is one of the ones that's that i'm going to remember for a long long time i mean there's certain games like that there's your celeste your hollow knights but braid was definitely one of them for me as well totally um and it's got just really fascinating puzzle mechanics a totally mad story really interesting stuff going on there i first played it while i was at uni it was one of the games that got me kind of back into gaming um, because it was released in i think 2008 it's, yeah it's substantially old now <laughs> yeah no definitely and i actually played it around about the time that we started this podcast actually yeah, so yeah. it's actually not very old mm. to me but my god it was so so unbelievably good and I, i'm really excited to talk about it because in actual fact i don't think me and you have had like a really proper discussion about it so i'm actually quite excited to have that discussion and to have that discussion on the podcast Absolutely, as well. so, yeah. Yeah. let's do it then yeah so yeah braid you can definitely you can pick it up all over the place it's pretty cheap you can get it on Steam right now for ten ninety nine, and quite frankly, it's worth every damn penny of that. It is such an incredibly good game. All right, guys, I think that'll do us for this week. Just want to remind you that you can find players too on all the social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, the lot. You can also find our written content over at players com. That's P L A Y E R S T O O com. And again, if you like anything that you've heard in this podcast, please, please, please take five seconds to go and give us five stars over on Apple Podcasts. It really does a huge amount for us. It is 
the thing that you can do that would help us out the most it really does help us out a huge amount and while you're over there you might as well give us a little review as well not a big diatribe just a little thumbs up is more than good enough for us this month our game is going to be braid as we just discussed and i think we'll see you next week guys thanks very much bye